Hello, my lovies. It's Lizzie. Oh my gosh. My husband just left out of town for a week. Although you're going to be listening to this after he's already back and stuff, but I just want you to know my house is quiet. I'm by myself. My kids are at school and it feels so amazing. Today, we're going to be talking about extinction bursts. This is a topic that I learned about as a mother to a child with autism who is going through behavioral therapy in our home. And the therapists taught me this, and I am totally stoked to show you how it totally happens in our egos, in our minds, in our psyches, postpartum, and also in our bodies with energy, with pain that's being released, with trauma. I'm so excited to show you this. I can't even wait. When I made this connection, I was like, no way. It's unreal. It's so real. It's so real. It's unreal. Okay, let's dive in. Welcome to the Postpartum Coach Podcast, where we embrace our needs as moms, we learn to lead ourselves first, then our families, and where we create our own healing from the inside out to find our way to the work we were meant to do in this world. I'm your host, a fellow mom of three, and a certified life coach, Lizzie Langston. Hi, babes. All right. Before I actually dive into this such cool topic, I can't wait to share with you stories. I think it's going to blow your mind. It kind of blew mind when I made the connection. I was sitting on the toilet. By the way, I plunged that toilet. All four of the toilets in my house were not flushed when I went to use them today, and it triggered me so hard, and two of them were clogged. Actually, I don't have four toilets in my house. One of them was out in the casita. I feel like that makes my house sound way bigger than it is. It's not even my house. It's my parents' house. We're renting from them right now. Anyway, Long story, but I'm just going to tell you, I clogged that damn thing and I feel real proud right now. And also I want to tell you that somebody told me that I have that pregnancy glow today and it just made me so happy. Had I just put bronzer on? Yes. But does that take away from the beauty of that compliment? No, I'm going to receive it fully. Okay. So before I dive into extinction bursts, let me just tell you that I just found out Okay. I was Googling a couple things. I'm looking at maybe getting ads on the podcast, but I want ads that are really, really geared towards you guys, like things that would actually benefit your life. Don't worry. I've got you. I'm not going to like fill your mind with noiseless advert, noiseless, not noiseless, annoying advertising that is pointless for you. Um, I want to make sure I'm bringing you things that I really care about and that I've experienced and that I think are great anyway. Just want you to know, but I was looking at stuff and I realized that my podcast with the amount of downloads I get per new episode, I'm in the top 10%. The postpartum coach podcast because of you guys is in the top 10% of podcasts. Okay. It's kind of because of me too. We'll, we'll share the glory, but isn't that freaking awesome? And it's to the point where I get emails by people who want to advertise on my podcast because you guys are such great listeners and you actually engage and I'm just so proud of us. Good job, friends. I want to remind you that one of my rewards for you for being so loyal and like actually taking the time of day to listen, I even know, listen, I know that some of you guys are not even postpartum really anymore, but you still listen and I love you for that. And you also share this with your friends and your cousins and like people who are having babies. And I Oh, I just want to take such good care of you. I want I want you to know how much I appreciate you. So I started a free community to just get a step closer. I spend time there. I give pieces of my heart. If you want to get to know me better, if you want to see like all sides of me, I post photos that make me look ugly and weird. <laughs> Come to the podcast community. The link is going to be in the show notes. I'm going to try to put it in there every single episode now so that you can find it easily, but it's just the postpartum coach podcast community. That's what it's called. So if you just search that in Facebook groups or just go get the exact link in the show notes. And if you're on my email list, sometimes I send it out to you in the emails so you can find it there as well. Listen, if you are not on my email list, this is my last plug. And then I'm going to get going here with the podcast episode, but if you're not on my email list, I really lately have been actually trying to make my emails like really good and really profound. I want them to bless your life. And so it's kind of worth being on there. And I have a free mini course that I just redid with brand new videos. So even if you had it before, you might want to get on there again with your second or third email address that I know you probably have like I do. (laughs) So it's just lizzielangston.com, my homepage, and there's a bunch of freebies right there. And it's the get out of the postpartum rut free mini course. So get on my email list. I'd love to have you. We'll get to know each other more intimately and it'll feel tight. All right. So my son, my oldest son, well, okay. We're going to go into the actual episode now. (laughs) If you couldn't tell 
my oldest son, he is, I'm going to be nine soon. And he is on the spectrum. He also has ADHD. He's also a brilliant and phenomenal human being. I, I feel the need to say that in the same sentence as he has autism only because there are many of us who, because we haven't seen autism up close and personal kind of still think that it's a detriment. That's like, Oh, like I know I, there's still a part of me that feels bad for myself or feels bad for him that he has autism. But as I've gotten a close up understanding through being his mother and seeing how his brain works and his extra cool gifts and his challenges, I will just say that autism is an extreme gift to mankind. I'm not just saying that because like, I can't look grief in the face. I have cried plenty over my son having autism, but I also have been like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I just sounded like I was in trolls. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Um, The movie. Okay. Okay. But I was listening to TED Talks while I was folding laundry, and actually, I've been trying to find ways to get him off of screens, because screens are for sure his most preferred activity, like specifically playing games and watching certain YouTube videos about playing games. And so I turned on some TED Talks while I was doing laundry, and he was sort of just doing his thing that he does where he goes back and forth between like a chair and the bed or a desk and the bed, and he just like, he could literally for like 45 minutes, he just kind of bounces off the two things. And it's this cool sensory cadence that he has that he does in the evenings. So he was doing that while I was folding clothes and we were listening to a Ted talk. And it was about this person that has like that experiences autism. Basically this woman, her brain sees everything in images. She doesn't think in words. And so obviously that has challenges with it, but it also has like amazing, amazing capabilities. And she's been able to help with the invention of certain things. And I don't even know what else she did. I probably wasn't listening that cool. The whole point of it for me was that autism is actually really an asset to the collective. And so I'm determined as his mom, I'm wrapping up here with this topic and then I'll move on, but I'm determined as his mother to make sure that I don't just see the ways he struggles in our society, because he does, his executive functioning is hard for him. And he sometimes can't do things that my younger kids can do, or they're extra challenging for him. And it is heartbreaking sometimes when I let myself think that it should be different than that. But when I focus on what he does have that is unique to him, it's incredible. And it's kind of like, whoa, almost alarming in a breathtaking kind of a way. So just putting that out there. Um, and I wish I could help you if you were ever wondering if your children are on the spectrum, but I literally didn't see it till he was like eight. So you should probably talk to somebody else about that. Anyway. So we have these therapists that come into our house for like 20 hours a week and, um, sounds like a lot, but it's sometimes doesn't even feel like enough. It's fine. And um, cause he goes to school throughout the day. Um, he does have a half day Wednesdays. So they come in and they're behavioral therapists and they, do one hour of parent training every week. So my husband and I kind of understand not just some of their lingo, but also just how the whole thing works. And basically what they do is they, you know, once he had his actual autism diagnosis, which was such a relief and so nice, um, but was also very scary for us to finally get to that point of doing that because we figured it would probably be life-changing, which it was, but in a good way, but mostly good way, but you know, it's like a big thing. Anyway, so we get him diagnosed we find this therapy place and then they actually proceed to test him even more finely um, so that they can then, they make a big plan for his whole year. Kind of like an IEP if you're getting help in the public school system, except way better done because it's privately funded. We're paying these people a lot of money. So anyway, we get this big year long plan and then they break it up into like month goals and they just take it by month and they might need to adjust and make changes and whatever. And they target certain things and they start with the easiest things and then they progressively get a little bit more challenging, but they, they do it in a specific order to make sure that he's not overwhelmed. And for the first couple of weeks, they didn't even do any therapy really. They just played with him because they were trying to establish a relationship. So these people do it the right way and it's slow and steady, but it's working really well. So one thing they taught us about is something called an extinction burst. And essentially, if you don't already know what it is, it kind of gives itself away in the name, but an extinction burst is when right before you're about to get rid of a behavior that is not beneficial and we want to lose the behavior. Um, this, this is the same in OCD, you know, when you go to an inpatient facility for OCD or any sort of like thing like that. 
Um, an extinction burst is when basically the, the, the patient or the person tries everything they can, every manipulation, every lie, every, you know, anger, reaction, raising their voice. They basically throw a tantrum, but not because their emotions are out of hand, but because their brain wants to be able to do this familiar, comfortable behavior that the world around them, and in this case, his parents and therapists have decided is not going to serve him as he develops and grows up and participates in society. And so it sucks. It sucks to witness an extinction burst, especially in your own kid, especially when they're being super rude to really nice therapists who you really like. Um, it sucks because he's saying things that aren't true. He, you know, they'll throw, and I don't want to embarrass my kid. This is just human behavior. And it's probably been happening to you too, <laughs> but in subtler ways. And I'm so excited to tell you about it postpartum. Um, and even if you're not postpartum, so stay tuned. It's so good. But um, it's super hard to see, right? But essentially, whether you want to call it the ego or whatever, let's just say for now, the ego has a stronghold on, you know, this is how I'm going to do things. The brain, it's always harder for the brain to change than to stay the same, even if the change is good. Let me say that one more time. It's always going to take more calories, more energy, and more effort for the brain to change than to stay the same, even if the change will make life easier and better. The brain thinks, generally speaking, the brain thinks in path of least resistance, which is why it can be hard to get yourself to go to the gym when you haven't been going or to start eating differently when you haven't been eating differently, like to change anything. It takes um, an up level of effort. And often when we put in that effort, we're going to be met with an extinction burst. We're going to be met with a part of our consciousness that's going to kick and fight against it because it wants what is familiar and easy right now. But then we have our adult self, just like my child has this team of therapists and his adult parents who can see kind of where he's headed on his trajectory and can see and have decided that these things are in his best interest to root out of his behavior. Now, I'm really careful. I don't want to take away from his spiritual gifts or his creative expression. I'm not trying to touch those things. We're just talking about social and executive functioning, organizing his life, taking care of his hygiene, things that are not working that are going to make it difficult for him to participate in society in a somewhat healthy, regular way. Okay. So let's talk about how this can happen. And I've seen this happen postpartum. I was just on a call with a client. She's actually a past client who signed up to do like two more weeks of private coaching as like a brush up. So it's been so fun to see her she knows who she is anyway. And she had her first baby about a year ago. And I would say she for sure is still feeling postpartum. Even if it's outside of the textbook definition, I really want you guys to know that the, the textbook definition of what quote postpartum is when you Google it or ask your doctor, I don't think it has to be that way. If you feel postpartum, if you feel like your issues are still revolving around adjusting to life as a mother of this child, then you can totally benefit from postpartum resources. All right. Anyway, end of story. So I'm talking to her and she is talking about some thoughts that have come through her mind in the last little while. And they've been really, I can see as she's talking about them that they hurt her. These are very painful thoughts. And specifically, it's not just thoughts. It's like a voice in her head that it follows a familiar pattern and it comes in at certain times when she is up leveling or doing something brave and new. And the voice doesn't just say like, you can't do it. It takes her best efforts and twists them into this really ugly, distorted half truth. So it'll take things that might be true about her and it will like make them seem like it's trying to catch her out and she's lazy or she's avoidant or she's doing things really bad. I'll give you an example of how this happened for me. I'm going to protect her privacy. I'm not going to share hers, but something that happened for me is I was, um, I want, I want you to understand this critical voice because it's, it needs to be extinct and it will burst before you try to extinguish it. And this only this, this voice thing comes out when you are up leveling in consciousness. Okay. So that happens to be postpartum for a lot of women, whether it's your first or third or seventh baby at some point, something about the postpartum realm and what your body and mind go through, it's likely that you will have a spiritual expansion 
because our physical and emotional worlds go down. And so our spiritual world goes up postpartum. And if you are tuned into that, you can really work with this energy in this amazing period of your life to cut through a lot of patterns and to be really enlightened. But if you're not in tune with that and you're pushing through, kind of like if you push through during certain parts of your menstrual cycle, then you're going to have really bad PMS. Like if you are if you are menstruating and you are not resting a lot, then yeah, the next month when you get premenstrual, you're going to be bitchy because your body has actual needs to slow down and rest during certain times. Okay. So it's kind of similar with postpartum. If you just push through and try to get back to normal too quickly, you might be fine for a minute and then you could crash. You could have long-term issues, you know, come up with that. So Something that happened with this voice with me is I was at a period in my life where I was increasing in my consciousness, we could say. I had had my third baby just recently, and my big um, expansion of consciousness, spiritual sensitivity, my you could call it a kundalini awakening, was definitely after my third baby. A side note, a kundalini, and I'm going to get to the thought in a second, a kundalini awakening, really briefly, is essentially a coil of energy that everybody, every human has, uh, this kundalini energy, it's feminine energy, and it's, it sits at the bottom of your spine. And when you have a baby, especially vaginally, the baby goes through the vaginal canal, right, it bursts right through your root chakra, this energetic center of your body that's the, the root energy. And it can awaken and sort of have burst forth this feminine energy coil that sits at the base of your spine. It's very Eastern world. So if you've never heard of this, you can look it up and learn about it. What is a Kundalini awakening? Check out Yoga Journal has a really good, a couple articles on it. Um, but essentially really postpartum and having babies can be a time where your consciousness gets an upgrade and we don't really ask for it, but here it is. And I think especially at this time in the world. And so I think it's good that you guys should know about it because it could be happening to you. And what it does is even though it sounds like a great thing, like, oh, an upgrade in consciousness, you actually essentially move kingdoms is what it feels like. You move into a, it's like you go from 2D to 3D reality or from 3D to 4D reality. It's fascinating and it's awesome. It sounds like a great thing, but it also changes your world so drastically that everything feels new. Every part of your life feels new. If you had a job before, going back to it feels new. And sometimes it's all so different that you don't even want the same things anymore. And you have to like basically rebirth yourself and recreate this new existence. No big deal, right? So when I was going through this for myself, um, I remember I had started working with my first life coach because I was just sort of floundering. And, um, I was honing in on this mean voice. Now we all have a critical mean voice in our head, but I have gotten to a point in my consciousness where the, the mean voice and I don't really engage or coexist. And it's not even there. It's like 98% gone. I was telling my client, it sneaks up on me 2% of the time. And it's usually if I've spent too much time with my kids and I'm neglecting my own needs. So then I start being snappy and like mean with them. And then it comes in and hits me in my weak spot. Cause I really care about my relationship with my kids. And my, this, this, this part of my head like knows that. And so it'll start to not even consider the fact of, that I'm drained and, and malnourished emotionally and spiritually. It will just focus on how I'm not being the mom that I want to be. And it'll like ride me for that. Like it, this voice has taken me down. It is why I got into postpartum depression. And I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Self-critical voice. Okay. And it can be mean. And my client was sitting there. Oh, okay. The, the thought that came into my head, I was at a stoplight taking my kids to preschool and the voice was like, you're, and I was running late and the preschool was like literally around the corner from my house. So my brain's like, you are so ri like ridiculous. You're never going to be on time. Like you're always so late, like, uh, just so mean. And because I had been shifting in my consciousness, I'd been working with someone I'd been like drawing a distinction between me and this voice in my head, I was able to not just hear it because hearing it is the first step. You have to hear it and, and separate it from yourself by witnessing it. But then I was also able to like, mm, no, uh, uh, no more. We don't talk to myself like that. And that was the beginning of the end of me trying to motis motivate and change myself through self-critical talk. I want you to know there can be an extinction of that pattern in your life and in your your people's lives, your daughter's lives, your kids' lives. We don't have to operate from, from that place of self-criticism. And what I realized as my client is sitting there, not only is she telling me what 
this part of her said, she hasn't, she hadn't identified it in this particular moment as the mean voice. She just was like kind of spouting out some of the thoughts she's had on this certain topic and decision she was trying to make. And she was sort of letting me, she told me like the kind of mean thing, but she didn't see it as mean. She just saw it as sort of true and kind of sad news. And I could feel how emotional it was for her to say that, but it was, it almost felt like she thought she had to believe it because it was somehow true. And that's the crazy thing with this self-critical voice in our head, you guys, is that the reason we listen to it is because it feels like it's going to protect us. But I want you to think about an abusive relationship. It's the same thing. The reason people don't leave their abusers is because they genuinely think that they're safer with them. We we can't see what we can't see as humans. And you can either find a loving, compassionate place of support, like a life coach is, is the example, or a therapist, somebody that can lovingly and compassionately show you what you're not seeing with grace and kindness and gentleness and even a sense of humor sometimes, like a lightness. Or you can have a mean voice in your head that tries to show you what you can't see and use it against you. That is abuse. So as humans, we have this vulnerable thing where we can't see all parts of ourselves, but we have different parts of our brain that sometimes can see parts that the other part of the brain cannot. And we need to train that voice and let that voice know that it is completely unacceptable to talk to us in a mean derogatory way. What this voice was doing for my client is basically gaslighting her, like, and also making her think that everything she was doing, which was genuinely always from her best efforts. Like she was trying to make decisions about childcare for her daughter. And she was trying to make the best decisions possible. Of course, like she cares about her daughter so much. She also cares about herself and her mental health. She's trying to figure out a balance for her and her unique motherhood. And this voice was like, yeah, but you're just doing that because you want to do this. And you're just doing that because you're this, and you're just doing that because that. And so she was telling me these thoughts as if they were like, it's sad, but true. And I, I need to face this truth. We never have to face truth in a way that feels like it's depriving us of the goodness within us. You never, ever have to try to motivate yourself or do better or fix things about yourself from a place of criticism and ugliness like that. If you have a voice in your head that talks to you all day or even part of the day, like you're, like you're little, like when you, if you feel little, if you feel icky, if this voice makes you cry and despair and think that you'll never rise above the occasion, then this voice is abusing you. It is abuse. It is abusing the vulnerability you have as a human to not be perfect yet. You are completely worthy of love and acceptance completely, no matter where you are. So even the things that that voice comes into your head with that you feel completely ashamed of, you can say to that, that is true. And I love and completely accept myself because listen, I've tried being like, that's not true, you know, to the voice. The truth is with my example in the car to preschool, how I was running late. The truth is I do run late. Uh, sometimes. And I do it for various reasons, consciously and and not consciously. So it just depends on the scenario. Um, And I love and accept myself in my lateness. I don't even like the word late because it kind of insinuates, even it's not neutral for me just because of the way I was raised and things, experiences I've had with different people. Um, And our culture even shames the late game. And I kind of like don't especially in the motherhood realm, especially pregnant with three kids, especially postpartum. My love's postpartum. Oh my gosh, that's so annoying. Sorry, hold on. <laughs> that's funny. My phone started dinging. I had an alarm. Um, I did a couple client calls and I'm back. What do you know about that? So yeah, definitely not postpartum. I don't have any issues with the lateness, but here's what we figured out with my client. And here's what I want to share with you. If you have a really aggressive, I mean, for some women, this voice is very aggressive and it's unhealthy and it is a danger to your emotional well-being and you know it. You know if you're one of these people, right? And and for some of us it's not every category of life, it's like one category. My um really really critical gaslighty like super twisted manipulative voice comes in around my motherhood specifically. I already told you that. Anyway, so think about where it is the strongest in your life, where does it have a stronghold? 
And I don't think it really serves to be like, why do we have this voice? How old were you when you first had this? Like we could do that, but at the end of the day, we just need it to be gone and we need to put it in check ultimately. So like I said, here's how my client and I figured it out. And this just came to me as I was talking to her and I love it when stuff just comes to me. If you have self-compassion, you do not need self-criticism because here's the thing. You either are motivated by one or the other. And as you wean off of self-criticism as the way to get yourself to do things and being mean to yourself, even though you might not consciously sign up for that, if, as, if you are in any way engaging with and heeding and buying into any part of what that voice is saying, then you are using self-criticism to motivate you. And sometimes it's even straight up self-hatred. It's, hor- it's horrid. So it's not horrid. It's just one operating system versus upgrading to the self-compassion operating system. And so how you get away from the self-criticism is you increase the skill of self-compassion. Most of us kind of start at sucking at self-compassion. And in a past life, I did too. Past life being earlier in my life when I was in a completely different stage of consciousness and expansion. Uh, I, I was scared to give myself compassion because I thought if I'm compassionate, I I didn't consciously think this, but I think I assumed that if I was nice to myself when I wasn't behaving well, then I would never change my behavior. And that is a false, and I can't wait for you to experience what it's like to have self-compassion. Now I wanted to make you an offer. I wanted to tell you about a way that I can help you from a distance. If you would like some help with this, I've tried to make it really affordable, you guys. So I have my, typically I do a program, which is live coaching and then an online curriculum. It's called uh, postpartum freedom used to be called better than normal again. So if you hear that on earlier podcast episodes, it's the same program, just different names. Okay. But right now I'm going to, I'm going to have a baby. And I was thinking, I really don't want to just not use this amazing online curriculum through the next six months as I, you know, have a baby and in postpartum and stuff and really pregnant. So I made a page where you can, oh my gosh, no joke. The clock says two, two, two. And that is literally the price of my course. That is so fun. I'm like, thank you universe for letting me know that I'm on the right track. Seriously. Side note, I've been looking up angel numbers every time I've seen them. Yesterday I saw 1111, 333, 444, and 555. It was awesome. And I wasn't even trying. It just like happened. And so I looked up the messages for each of those and it was, I just felt so loved and hugged by the universe, you guys. So this is just one more affirmation that I have support in going this direction. So I hope that you take a look. I'll put the link in the show notes. It's lizzylangston.com forward slash course. But I essentially took the online curriculum for my program and I gave it to you. You can just buy access, lifetime access to the online curriculum portion only without live coaching. Okay. Which saves you lots of money. Obviously the live coaching is extremely valuable. That's why you're not getting all, you know, you're not paying for it. Um, but what I am offering is Voxer coaching, which is remote coaching. And I love remote. And that's, so that's like an add on. So basically you get the course, you do it. You might not even need or want coaching. You do have access to me when you buy the course. Again, it's lizzylangston.com forward slash course. I'll put the link in the show notes. Um, when you buy the course, you get not only lifetime access, but access to me through the comments. And so every video you can comment and um, tell me what you're loving. Also ask me any questions. And then I respond to every single comment that comes through. So that's how you can work with me right now. Um, That curriculum is designed to teach you the skill of self-compassion. And to help you switch gears from being mean to yourself to being loving to yourself, you will feel it in the way I talk to you. That's what people tell me. And that's what I can tell you is that you will feel a difference just by being in my presence. And it's not because like I'm God or something. I mean, actually, I kind of think we're all God. We all have 100% divinity and 100% human within us. So maybe I am God, (laughs) but I'm not the God. You're God too, right? So But you can use wherever I'm at in my consciousness and the lessons I've learned and the softness and kindness I have developed with myself. And I'm going to be teaching you how to have that. And then, of course, there's going to be a lot of tools around the nervous system regulation in your motherhood and in your mental game. So it's calm your body is the first section, calm your mind, and then calm your life where we talk about parenting and marriage and kind of taking some of these tools and extending them outside of the just your internal world into other aspects and relationships in your life. So it's really, really amazing. And I hope you take me up on it. And it's only $222. I think that's pretty affordable. 
If you need to save up for it, you can. If you can buy it right now, you can. If you can buy five and gift it to your friends, do that too. (laughs) Whatever you want. Um, But I can't recommend it enough. I've worked really hard. And in fact, that program, I want to credit the first two cohorts of my program, Postpartum Freedom, my 12-week coaching program that goes along with this online curriculum. Those women asked the tough questions. They they, they found like they found where the gaps were in my teaching and I was able to fill them. And I actually quadrupled the size of that course. So it's about five, just over five hours total, but it's broken into like 15 minute videos on average and different sections. And then there's worksheets and then you get bonus podcasts. I will let you look at all the details. I'm not going to bore you with all of them here, but go check it out. LizzieLangston.com forward slash course. I literally made this just for you guys. I was thinking of you, how I can help you while I'm going into baby land. And this is something that I want to do. And then of course, I'm always available still for um, remote coaching, potentially some private coaching, potentially some free consults. I'm just going to be playing it by ear with baby coming. Um, So the sooner you get in, the better. That way, if you do decide you need more support, you and I can negotiate before I'm, you know, technically postpartum. I love you. You guys listen, self-compassion is the way and your ego will burst. It will have an extinction burst. When you start cracking down on that voice in your head, it's going to get louder. It's going to get worse. It's going to try all the manipulations. It's going to try all the old tricks and you just let it know that even if it's true, what it's saying, you love and completely accept yourself in the flaws that it's trying to point out to you. And that you weren't made to be perfect right this second. And as you stand in complete love for yourself, that voice will die down. And that is my dream and my wish for all the moms. And it's my wish for my past self because it caused me a lot of pain and suffering and darkness. And I literally... You think about the word depression, it means a hole, like a, like somebody's walking and then bloop, they fall into a depression in the curb, in the cement. That is essentially, we just implode with this negative voice. We cannot, we cannot. I mean, we can, but it's at such a great cost and I can't wait until you can live life without it. Like I feel like I am living 98% of the time. It's amazing and wonderful and my course will help you get there. Okay. So go check it out. I love you guys and we will talk soon. See you next week. Hey. Lizzie here. I've helped dozens of postpartum moms just like you to manage their postpartum anxiety and deconstruct their postpartum depression. It's really easy for me. I've put my whole process inside of an online course called Postpartum Freedom, the course. You can get it today by going to lizzielangston.com forward slash course and meet me in the comments of the videos. I will be able to respond to all your comments 